then some other person they think is uh, this life I'm pretty all right, but I'm a bit concerned about future life. So that type of person, you should more talk about. You do this uh, virtues, do this practice. It helps you to not reborn in the lower realms. You will reborn in a higher rebirth. But that person not so capable about to gain liberation or renounce the entire samsara. So someone who's not ready, you talk about samsara is a full suffering. Mm -hmm. You should renounce. Then it more kind of a discourage than courage. So that type of person, first you just talk according to their interest, make them strong. And then third person say, uh, really uh, sees the uh, entire samsara is like a burning place. You know? No matter wherever I dwell in, there's no suffering. So I really want to, free, want to free from the samsara. So that type of person interest to self-liberation you should talk about the how to gain self-liberation because that person is not interested in fully Buddhahood cycle sending me. If you talk that, it's more harmful than benefit. So you just talk that teaching. And then someone says, I really interest, uh, like uh, uh, I'm not just suffering myself. I look around, everyone's suffering. So what best things I can do that help everyone? So that's best is uh, to Buddhahood. So that type of person, if you teach like a uh, First three is mistakes because this first three is no interest because it only interest the last one. They should talk about the last one. So, in, so it's in this way, we say like when you give teaching, you never give teaching what you know about yourself. You should give teaching what their requirement, what they need. According to that, then you give teachings. You know, so like in like a, as a group environment, uh, teacher giving kind of a broad kind of a teaching. So you don't need to take everything that you're hearing from the teacher. It's important, like, uh, what kind of a suitable for you, uh, then what is uh, relevant to you, just take that part. But sometimes you don't start there, you know, say, I'm capable of this, but I can a little bit move forward. Like, uh, try to take a little bit more than what you're capable, you know. Because if you take a bit more than what you're capable, it helps you to kind of a confidence. I thought I'm never going to do it, but I, at least I did it now. So when I did it, then now I'm not f scared of the next one. You know? So that's the reason. Like uh, Sometimes it's good to take a little bit more than what you can care If you say, oh, I can't do it, or oh, this is not too much, if you just kind of uh, discourage you, you're never going to progress, both in spiritual world and mundane world. No, whatever uh, your spiritual life or mundane work, you just try to take a little bit extra than what you think your limit. Yeah. So in this way, now we talk about uh, the third. If you have attachment to self uh, purpose, you do not have bodhicitta mind. So now we tr tr train to develop this bodhicitta mind. So in order to train bodhicitta mind, then there's a uh, four steps. Yeah, uh, we have to follow the four steps. Uh, first one, in order to benefit for other, one meditate loving kindness. Second, in order to free other from suffering, meditate on compassions. Uh, third, in order to other sentient being, one must obtain the Buddhahood. And the fourth. In order to achieve the Buddhahood, one must practice the, the method. So there's the four parts. Yeah? So first we talk about, uh, in order to benefit for others, uh, loving-kindness. Uh, so loving-kindness, uh, in the parting from the four attachment and the triple vision, they always start from the mother. And then, uh, Kamala Shila stages of meditation before the loving kindness. He uh, kind of recommended to meditate equanimity. Yeah. Uh, so reason they're saying like uh, uh, if you train equanimity means to everyone, then when you practice loving kindness, it's not the difficulty. It's not bias. You know, you can meditate loving kindness to everyone. If you don't have this equanimity much easier to practice loving kindness to one's loved one, but harder to your uh, disliked person or neutral person. So it's again, it's an individual option. Like if you 
think it's easier to love your kindness straight away, start with your uh, loved ones and then enemy and then neutral. Uh, if you think that way you can practice loving kindness or sentient being, then neutral is not uh, important. If you think it's a bit hard to love your kindness to everyone, the first you should train the uh, to train equanimity is important. Uh, so I touch a little bit like a uh, Kamalashila uh, give method how to train your mind, uh, develop the economy to all being is like a, he giving three reasons. Yeah, uh, three reasons are the first one uh, say like a, myself and all other being want to be happiness. That point of view. My, myself and others no differences. That's the first reason we are all equal. And the second, uh, how much I don't want to be suffering, then all other beings, they don't want to be suffering. So that's the second point of view, we are equal. And the third, uh, you're not going to find one single being who never been your most kind mother. And that point of view, everyone is equal. So these three reasons, if you bring in your mind and look to the sentient being, then immediately you're not going to see everyone's equal because we have a, such a so many this uh, habit of thinking some is a loved one, someone is distant, some is neutral. So so much of that's a uh, what we call the uh, cla uh, what we call the uh, classes in our mind, sentient beings. You know, so many categories in our mind. So this category does not exist out there. We created our own kind of tribe, tribal. Yeah? We call the different tribes. You make our own tribe. Mm -hmm. So to break the tribe kind of a, uh, kind of a, uh, tension is like a develop this equanimity. So once we have a very good kind of this equanimity, then much easier to practice loving kindness to all sentient beings. Yeah, that's the one uh, Kamala Shila state in the, uh, the stages of meditation. Then according to uh, the parting from the Four Attachment and uh, Triple Vision, uh, they're saying like, uh, uh, when you meditate the loving kindness, uh, you make uh, three kind of uh, groups, she uh, recommended three groups. First group is the close one. Second group is like uh, the distance or enemies. And third group is the neutral beings. Yeah. So first, like a, uh, the close group is like a start from you should, traditional. You probably you heard many times like a, we call the mother, because uh, not necessarily it's not compulsory. There's like a, any person that you think is easy to develop loving kindness. That's the first one. So it's either it's your mother, or your father, or your friend, your partner, or your child. Yeah, anyone that makes the first one make it easier. Yeah. Uh, so in the tradition we talk about the mother. So when we use a mother as an object of loving kindness, then uh, we kind of uh, three way to develop the loving kindness to mother. The first one we say is like a uh, mother giving us body and life is the one. And the second is she is the first and four most important teacher in our life, second reasons. And the third reason, she uh, is or was sacrificed for us everything. So these three reasons, we need to think about it. Uh, so first, like a, think about like a, she's extremely kind for me, reason because she giving me this precious life. She giving me this precious body, yeah. So, to how she gave this precious life body is like a, just think about. We always talk about it. this all part of meditation. We need to create it, you know. If you not create these things, you just generally loving kind is not going to be come to you. So we have to create. Like, we have to like when we build house, we have to construct it. Without constructing, just wishing to be have a nice house, it's not going to appear out of nowhere. So we have to build it. So similarly, loving kindness, we have to build within our mind and heart. 
to, to how to construct this loving kindness is like a, then uh, remember the mother uh, whether she is alive or deceased think about when I conceived her womb until I was born just imagine uh, how much uh, she sacrificed things for me to have a healthy baby uh, think about uh, many things she loves to eat and drink but she avoid because no good for the baby you know many things she doesn't like to eat or drink but she drink and eat because things are good for the baby so in that point of view alone how much she kind of uh, uh, care until we get birth so that is not talking about just one day uh, one week or uh, one month talking about up to nine to ten months so this up to nine or 10 months is not okay, about a few hours, 24 7. Yeah? So it's an incredible, kind of impossible we can repair until we get birth, how much is sacrifice. That's not to finish our job. Now we give birth, and when we get birth, we don't have any idea how to survive, how to protect us. We're just a piece of meat, you know, when we're born. You know? So now, like she kind of really kind of all just looked at the expression of the baby say if she seems like a cold keep us warm and if it's too hot keep us a cold if we thirsty give us the drink if we hunger give us the food but not just a normal cloth a normal drink normal food she not give me she give me according to her own kind of a level giving the best one for the child you know uh, even she can't afford her own nice things by she giving this nice thing to the baby. Just imagine how much. So that way we kind of brought up until we can communicate what I want. You know, she kind of completely kind of what we call the uh, loyalty to me. And she completely become like a me rather than herself. You know? So that way, just along that, just imagine how much she sacrificed. And then when we start to communicate, we start to, uh, to understand how, what to do, then she always uh, teaching us, for instance, what is the good, what is the bad, you know? So all the time, like uh, uh, many of you heard, many times I always say, like, if every one of us listen to mother's advice, we're all going to be great people, mm -hmm. you know? None of mother says you should be a terrible person, you know? Everyone says you'll be a kind person, you'll be a nice person, you know? So that way, she is the first greatest teacher, but we don't pay anything. She just, we never even request her to give teaching, but she just, from her heart, honestly give this teaching to us, you know? So in this way, just imagine how much she gave us things. such a great, if you think of when you childhood, like I'm, uh, most of us, we have a, such a kind mother, remember what she used to say things to us. If you reflect them, many of them were treasure, very helpful in our life. You know? So that kind of way, uh, she is very kind. And then when we start to go to school or university, just again imagine how much she supports. She prepare food, put in a in kind of lunch box, prepare our drink, put in the bottles. You know, just imagine how much she kind of uh, uh, prepare. And then when we come home, we still complaining, you know, mom, as soon as we get, we take out our cloth and all this, the, the box we just throw out in the kitchen. Then next morning, it's completely tidy, put nice food, and then put in our bag, we ready to go, you know? So in that way, just imagine how much she really kind of uh, uh, sacrifice everything, just make us feel comfortable. So in this kind of point of view, remember, then, more you think of more than one day it may have possibility to think oh i cannot pay the kind of that i receive from mother so that time then much easier to wish her to be happy yeah not only that just think about sake of my happiness how many times she is telling lying for others yeah sake of our happiness 